dear students you are welcome back to the learning platform of ktm college and we are discussing the poem there is a certain slant of light is which is written by emily dickinson so friends <coughs> in our previous uh, talk we talked about the poet and her life then the themes of her poetry then we read out the poem and now as we have to cast light on the analysis of the poem in the analysis we have winter sunlight which is the over image of despair for more than half a century this poem was regarded as belonging to the category of miss dickinson's nature poems but winter sunlight is simply the over image of despair in closing the center of suffering that is her concern was grammatically the antecedent of neutral it whose transformations make up the action of the poem is this certain slant of light but in figurative meaning it refers to the heavenly heart this is a true metaphor sensation and abstraction fused into one separable in logic but indistinguishable and even reversible in poetic sense then uh, she also uh, talk about the many sidedness of despair the poem is full of despair <coughs> these multiple images illustrating the many sidedness of despair are vividly individual and distinct but they grow out of which each other and into each other with a fitness that creates the intended meaning in a shock after a shock of recognition its amorphous quality is embodied at the outset in light a diffused substance that can be apprehended but not grasped so further this is a slanting light as uncertain of source and indirect in impact as the feeling of despair often is so finally it is that pale light of winter afternoons when both the day and the year seem to be going down to a uh, down to death the seasonal opposite of summer which symbolized for her the fullness and the joy of living next by the shift of the simile this desolation desolation becomes like the heft of cathedral tunes the nebulous has now been made palpable by converting light waves into sound waves whose weight can be felt by the whole body the strong provincialism heft carries both the meaning of ponderousness and the great effort of having in order to taste it then next <coughs> we come to know that there is a religious touch to the poem and it occurs in the first stanza the religious note on which the first stanza ends cathedral tunes is echoed in the language of the central stanzas heavenly heart could in its ambiguousness refer to the pain of paradisiac ecstasy but more immediately this seems to be an adjective of agency meaning from heaven rather than are attributive one meaning celestial or of a heavenly quality the heart is inflicted from above like the slant of light that that is its antecedent in this context that natural image uh, takes on a new meaning an oblique reflection of jaip or jaip in other words it is a mocking light like a heavenly heart that comes from the sudden instinctive awareness of man's lot since the fall doomed to mortality and irremediable suffering then 
she again talks about the despair beyond the human corrections and she says that this despair is beyond human correction none may teach it it happens in the line none may teach it dash and any though it penetrates it leaves no scar no identity as an outward sign of healing nor any internal wound that can be located and soothed what it leaves is internal difference the mark of all significant meanings when the mind is once stricken with the pain of such knowledge it can never be the same again the change is final and irrevocable sealed the biblical sign by which god claims man for his own has been shown uh, in miss dickinson's poems of heavenly bridal to be a seal the ring by which the beloved is married into immortal life in the final stanza or the the, the final and the complete desolation of landscape she also talks about in the present poetry in the, uh, sorry in the present poem the concluding stanza it means the final one as the poem uh, has only four stanzas the fourth and the final stanza returns to the surface level of the winter afternoons as the sun drops towards the horizon just before setting the landscape listens in apprehension that the very light which makes it exist as a landscape is about to be extinguished shadows which are about to run out to infinity in length and merge with each other in breadth until all is shadow hold their breath this is the effect created by the slanting light when it comes of course no such no such things happens in nature and it would be pathetic pathetic fallacy uh, to pretend that they did the light does not inflict this suffering nor is the landscape the victim instead these are just images of uh, despair with the slant of light when it uh, when it goes as the sun finally sets and darkness covers all it is like the distance on the look of death and uh, such the difference between the coming of despair and the aftermath of extinction the latter calls up an image of the star uh, you know staring eyes of the dead the awful distance between life and death and as experience that has made the sure control of form and language possible the final and the complete desolation of the landscape is the precise equivalent of that internal difference which the action of the poem has brought about then further she also uh, talks about the quality of despair it means the quality and effects of the despair uh, such is the mortal view of despair which are depicted in the present poem the quality and effect of which are the exclusive theme of this poem basically as she is uh, you know spending her time to talk about or talk on the despair the quality and the effect of despair from the beginning to end we happen to see only despair actually despair takes us into the nothingness of our life and though at certain ambivalent phrase here like the heavenly heart and the great seal of god seems related to the curious conjoining of ecstasy and despair that pervade much of miss dickinson's poetry or her poems and uh, along with this uh, these points she also again talks about the despair which can be connects with the winter it means that there is a despair which brings which winter brings she tries to associate 
the despair with the nature the despair with the winter this poem uses the framework of winter to explore the despair that this season often brings in western countries in western countries the winter is a more and more suffering one in a torturous the poem focuses on the paradox of light instead of a brightening and clarifying the slanted winter rays oppress and afflict threatening the soul's faith numerous re religious associations deepen this despair and indicate the light's function as a testing ground for the soul these despairing moments not only bring pain but the valuable imperial things that inspire awe and complete submission nature herself boasts to this power which is finally compared to death since the light pushes man's faith uh, to its farthest limit the poem illustrates man's inadequate control over the nature and the desperation with which he or she fights for survival a further comment on this poem could be the man's inability to know an existence beyond death causes this despair while man's psychological and emotional pain is paralleled by the underlying process of uh, decay in nature uh, dear friends uh, this was the analysis of the poem and uh, we also discussed the different shades of uh, despair from the poem and in this way us uh, we have enjoyed the poem called there is a certain slant of light of emily dickinson and uh, i i think uh, it is the stopping point and thank you thank you for being with me stay home and stay safe